George, there's nothing to be scared of. All it takes is a little self-confidence. You know, if you put your mind to it, you can accomplish anything. If you put your mind to it, you can accomplish anything. That's the motto of the legendary trilogy Back to the Future, and this film totally proves it right. This is the movie you watch like 10 times and every time you find something different in it, which is genius. It's the greatest movie of all times. It's literally timeless and it's a classic. The film is very dynamic, adventurous, funny, with incredible cast, directed by a brilliant Robert Zemeckis. I came here in a time machine that you invented. Time travel has always been fascinating because uh, it's something that I think we all fantasize a little bit about and that makes it really interesting. Back to the Future is written by the Maggies and Bob Gale and produced by Steven Spielberg. Among the people that we showed it to was Steven Spielberg. They brought it over to me and they said, uh, nobody gets this, maybe we're crazy. It was a very unusual story and yet it was based on a lot of old-fashioned principles of family, coming of age, getting your first car, and it was about the major disconnect between our generation and our own parents' generation, and that was all done through an amazing object lesson, which was this uh, sort of accidental trip back into the past. We are going to learn a great number of useful and interesting idioms and expressions, guys, for your daily use that would help you a lot be able to watch the movie easier in English and catch the words faster, which, therefore, will really improve your listening because the the pace of the events in the film is quite fast and on top of that, the actors talk also very fast. That makes it challenging for us to keep up with. That's why our practice is going to be a bit intense and cooking. Are you ready for fun but challenging English lesson? I bet you are. So let's get ready and have fun together. The film starts with a teenage guy, Marty, who comes to his friend's house to practice guitar because his band is auditioning this day for the school band. Are you telling me that it's 825? Precisely! Yeah! I'm late for school! The word precisely is used in the film a lot of times. And when we talk about the exact time, we say at 8 o'clock precisely, meaning at 8 o'clock sharp. You can use the word precisely when you want to emphasize what you're saying. For example, I will do precisely that. Or when you express complete agreement and answer precisely in the meaning of exactly or I totally agree. The leading role of Marty is played by a talented Michael J. Fox, who is a Canadian and American activist and retired actor. He was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease and unfortunately, worsening symptoms forced him to reduce his acting work. So, at Christmas time, I was called into Gary Goldberg's office and Gary uh, gave me an envelope, a manila envelope with the script in it. And he said, here's the script, take it home and read it. If you want to do it, and you know, do you have my blessing? I kind of went like this, put it down his desk and said, I love it. It's the best thing I ever read. And, um, and that was it. The so-called Dr. Brown is dangerous. He's a real nutcase. If you hang around with him, you're going to end up in big trouble. Oh, yes, sir. Marty's friend, Doc Brown, was called a nutcase, which means crazy. Same meaning when we say it's nuts, it's crazy. He's been called like that because he's a scientist. Doug Brown is played by amazing Christopher Lloyd. What did this guy look like? What are his characteristics? And almost right away, Einstein was a no-brainer. I remember I presented these thoughts to Bob Zemeckis, and he didn't even, he just like, okay. You've got a real attitude problem, McFly. You're a slacker. You remind me of your father when he went here. He was a slacker too. A slacker, a person who avoids hard work or effort, someone without goals or achievements. I notice your band is on the roster for the dance auditions after school today. Why even bother McFly? In the audition, Marty plays 
power of love by Huey Lewis, who actually agreed to make the part in the movie as a member of audition team. <laughs> Ironically, disapproving the song. I'm afraid you're just too darn loud. Next place. Nah, I just don't think I'm cut out for music. But you're good, Marty. You're really good. Whenever you feel that you are not the right person for something, you can use this idiom to express it. For example, I'm not cut out for an office job. It's like Dr. Yeah, I know, saying. I know. If you put your mind to it, you can accomplish anything. That's good advice, Marty. Accomplish, level C1, to finish something successfully, or to achieve something. Save the clock tower! Save the clock tower! 30 years ago, lightning struck that clock tower and the clock hasn't run since. You can use the word run in the meaning to work, to do, or to operate. For example, the clock runs, the experiment runs, the engine runs, the computer program runs. It's also used in the expression up and running, which means it's in a good condition and functions well. For example, a new computer is up and running. We at the Hill Valley Preservation Society think it should be preserved exactly the way it is, as part of our history and heritage. There you go, lady, there's a quarter. Heritage, level C2. Features belonging to the culture of a particular society, such as traditions, languages, or buildings, that were created in the past and still have historical importance. That clock has a great value because it's been built a long time ago and now it represents historical heritage. This word also means a person's racial, ethnic, or religious background. For example, he's an American of Italian heritage. And uh, where's my reports? Uh, well, I haven't finished those up yet, but, you know, I, I figured since they were due to... Hello? <laughs> Hello? Anybody home? Oh. Now we understand why his father was called a slacker. McFly, your shoes aren't that... <laughs> oh. <laughs> Don't be so gullible, McFly! <laughs> gullible, easily deceived or tricked, and too willing to believe everything that other people say. He's not successful and can't stand for himself, which made his wife lonely and unhappy. Jennifer Parker called you twice. I don't like her, Marty. Girls chasing boys. When I was your age, I never chased a boy or called a boy. Or... Chase something or chase after something means to try to get something. Like reporters chase after a story. But chase after someone means to want someone notice you for something romantic. Maybe even a relationship. The way I met your father. That was so stupid. Grandpa hit him with the car. He seems so helpless. And my heart just went out to him. Yeah, Mom, we know. You. My heart just went out to him. Go out to someone. A phrase. If your thoughts or sympathies go out to someone in a difficult or sad situation, you think of that person and feel sorry for them. So she felt sorry for him, and that's how she fell in love. And it was then that I realized that I was going to spend the rest of my life with him. <laughs> Here we see an example of how your self-realization can affect your happiness and also the happiness of your family. Marty meets Doc at the parking lot of Twin Pie Mall. Twin means something that looks the same or identical. Usually the kids who are born at the same birth are called twins. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Doc, you disintegrated Einstein! Calm down, Marty, I didn't disintegrate anything! Disintegrate, level C1, to become weaker or be destroyed by breaking into small pieces. The closest synonym to it is shatter. You can also use the words break or fall apart, but they don't have this exact meaning to be broken into small fragments. For example, the Ottoman Empire disintegrated into lots of small states. Where the hell are they? The appropriate question is, when the hell are they? Are you telling me that you built a time machine out of a DeLorean? As far as designing the car, you know, we just wanted it to look like it was something that could actually look like a time machine and also something that looked like it was built in someone's garage. And the third thing was it had to look kind of cool. He's all right. He's fine. And he's completely unaware that anything happened. As far as he's concerned, the trip was instantaneous. We've already learned the word instant 
which means right this second, yes? So instantaneous is its synonym. That means happening without any delay, happening immediately, like there was no break for it. November 5th, 1955. That was the day I invented time travel. Doc is telling Marty the story of how he's got an idea of his creation, and he calls it a revelation. I had a revelation, a vision, a picture in my head, a picture of this. Revelation, level C2, an extremely pleasant surprise, enjoyable and useful fact about something hidden that becomes now known. For example, his wife divorced him after a revelation that he was having an affair. Or, this film is a complete revelation to me, meaning something surprising or shocking, or the one that you didn't know about. It requires something with a little more kick. Plutonium! Are you, are you telling me that this sucker is nuclear? Dogs stole plutonium from the terrorists, and now they've come for him. But I need a nuclear reaction to generate the 1.21 gigawatts of electricity I need. Doc, you don't just walk into a store and, and buy plutonium. Did you rip that off? Rip something off. A phrase, to remove something very quickly, or, in slang, to steal something. The future. That's where you're going. That's right. Uh, look me up when you get there. Indeed, I will. Look someone up. A phrase, to visit someone you have not seen for a long time when you are visiting the place where they live. Oh my god. They found me. I don't know how, but they found me. Marty has no choice but run away in a car, which is a time travel machine. And without even realizing, he hits uh, the needed speed and appears in 1955 on a farm where the owner was breeding pines for a living. <laughs> Accidentally, Marty hits one of the twin pines. You space bastard! You kill my pine! Alright, okay, we're fine. Get a grip on yourself. It's all a dream. When you say to someone, calm down, you ask a person to be less excited or less angry. But with the idiom, get a grip on yourself, you ask not to become too excited or too angry, like not to panic, basically. Marty hides the car and gets into the city. The only person who can help him is a younger dog who lives here at this time. While thinking it through, he meets his own young father. Hey, McFly! What do you think you're doing? Yes. And also a young beef who bullies his father, George, all his life. Hello? Hello? Anybody home? Hey! hey. Think, McFly! <laughs> think! Marty can't believe what he just saw. Oh, McFly, your shoes are tight! Oh, oh. <laughs> Don't be so gullible, McFly! Oh. He realizes his father couldn't stand for himself since school. Say, what do you let those boys push you around like that for? Well, they're bigger than me. Stand tall, boy! Have some respect for yourself! Push someone around. A phrase, to tell someone what to do in a rude or threatening way. Stand tall and have respect for yourself. In American English, it's a medium. Stand tall, or you can say walk tall, means also to be proud of yourself and be ready to deal with anything. Don't you know if you let people walk over you now, they'll be walking over you for the rest of your life. That's 100% true. Walk over someone, a phrase, treat someone very badly make someone do what you want them to do, or defeat them very easily. That's what will actually happen with George in the future. He's a peeping Tom. Marty calls George a peeping Tom. So the word peep means secretly look at something, especially when you're not supposed to, like, you know, like this. But why peeping Tom? So there was a guy named Tom who was charged for picking at a naked lady who was undressed to protest taxes. Since then, this term is used to call anyone who secretly watches naked people and it's a crime in the US, guys. Trying to save his father, Marty gets hit by a car, by his grandfather's car. But according to his parents' love story, it was supposed to be George. And that's how his mother fell in love with him. You're my mom. You're my mom. My name is Lorraine. Oh my god, what a turn, yeah? So what's gonna happen? Marty finally finds Doc Brown and tries to convince him that he's from the future. Look at this picture. It's my brother, my sister, and me. Class of 1984. Pretty mediocre photographic fakery. They cut off your mother's hair. Mediocre, 
something just acceptable, but not very good, something ordinary. To generate the 1.21 gigawatts of electricity. 1.21 gigawatts! Please, cut! What the hell is a gigawatt? We say gigawatt, but Doc says gigawatt. He mispronounces it to show us that back in the days people didn't use this word as a power measurement because they never had that much power to work. Marty, I'm sorry, but the only power source capable of generating 1.21 gigawatts of electricity is a bolt of lightning. The flyer that Marty has saves the day. That same flyer that uh, was given by the lady who wanted to repair the clock, you remember? Because it was struck by lightning. If we could somehow harness this lightning, channel it into the flux capacitor, it just might work. He wants to harness lightning. How to understand it? To harness, it's a device, it's something that people use to hold them to prevent from falling, yeah? But back in the days, um, it was like leather straps used to connect, connect horses to a vehicle. And by this, people used horses' power for moving faster. That's why, as a verb, harness means to control something in order to use its power. For example, we can harness the wind. You must not leave this house. You must not see anybody or talk to anybody. Anything you do could have serious repercussions on future events. Do you understand? Dog talks really fast, guys. Did you understand everything from the first time? Write in the comments, guys, how you managed to get fast English native speaking and what helps you understand it better. We can help each other by sharing little tips and tricks and learn together much faster. He's saying... Anything you do can have serious repercussions on future events. The word repercussion is a synonym to the word consequences. Unfortunately, that warning was too late. And Marty's family existence might never happen because Marty has changed the sequence of the events and his parents still never met. You guys are being real mature. Maybe we were adopted. Hey, up, man. You're a slacker. Do you want to be a slacker for the rest of your life? Earlier, George was told to stand tall, yeah? Meaning have respect for yourself. And now to shape up. Kind of like make progress, improve your behavior, improve your work. For example, um, how are your plans shaping up? It's really a pleasure to meet you. How's your head? Oh, uh, good. This is more serious than I thought. Apparently your mother is amorously infatuated with you instead of your father. I've never heard anyone using this word infatuated when talking about romantic feelings. I would rather say it this way. Whoa, wait, wait a minute, Doc. Are you trying to tell me that my mother has got the hots for me? Precisely. Infatuated basically means the same, the expression, to have the hots for someone means. Apart from this meaning, infatuated also means to have a strong interest in something. And you can use it when you talk about your hobbies or your passion. For example, she has infatuated with dieting. Kind of like she's become obsessed with it. She cannot stop thinking and talking about it. So it's not only to be physically attracted to someone as the expression to have the hots for someone means. And Doc says, apparently, your mother is infatuated with you. Why he says apparently? So this word has two meanings and both of them work perfectly for the situation with Marty's mom. The first one is when something seems to be true, but you are not certain. For example, apparently it's going to rain today. The best synonym to it would be most probably. Most probably it's going to rain today. Apparently is also used when something is different from the way you thought it was. For example, apparently she's 30, but I thought she's 20. Apparently he's not coming. So let's go. Whoa, this is heavy. There's that word again, heavy. Why are things so heavy in the future? Is there a problem with the Earth's gravitational pull? What? Marty says this is heavy. And Doc doesn't understand what he means. He makes assumptions about gravitation, which is funny. Heavy, in informal English means, involving serious or strong feeling, something difficult to deal with. What are you writing? Stories. Science fiction stories. Get out of town. I didn't know you did anything creative. Is he kicking him out of town? 
Of course not. This is the expression that actually doesn't mean anything in the situations when you are surprised. It's basically saying like, wow, and it's old school. It's not popular anymore. About Lorraine, she told me to tell you that she wants you to ask her to the enchantment under the sea dance. Really? I think she'd rather go with somebody else. Bib has hots for Lorraine, Marty's mom, and obviously Marty cannot stand it. Since you're new here, uh... I'm gonna cut you a break today. So why don't you make like a tree and get out of here? The correct way to say it is make like a tree and leave. The young beef actually will be corrected in a very funny way, but it's going to happen in Back to the Future Part 2. So this expression became very popular after this movie and became even a movie quote. Nowadays it is mostly used in a humorous way, kind of like Live without any extra moves, right away. I need your help. I have to ask Lorraine out, but I don't know how to do it. All right, okay, listen, keep your pants on. She's over in the cafe. God, honey. God. He tells him, keep your pants on. We clearly understand that it's an expression and it has nothing to do with clothes, yeah? So it means to be patient. For example, are you ready to leave yet? Keep your pants on. I'll be ready in a minute. Tell her destiny brought you together. Tell her that she is the most beautiful girl you've ever seen in the world. George was writing the words in a hurry. So that's why he says... Rain, my density has popped me to you. What? My density. <laughs> so he confuses the words destiny, which means fate, and density, which means thickness of the material or something like density of smoke. This word is used in physics whenever we describe the relationship between the mass of a substance and its size. That's why some things are heavy and some things are light. George, help me! Close the door and feed it. No, Biff. You leave her alone. Beat it. It's the expression that I know from Michael Jackson's song, Just Beat It, which simply means go away. George finally overcomes his fear and wins Lorraine's heart. But they still haven't had their first kiss during the dance, which was the beginning of their relationship. So Marty goes on stage to perform to make it happen. Let's do something that really cooks. Something that cooks. At the beginning of the video, I said that uh, our English practice today is going to be cooking. In slang, uh, the word cook or cooking means to be full of activity and excitement, to perform or do something with the right energy and enthusiasm. For example, that dancer is really cooking tonight. Michael J. Fox's performance of Chuck Berry's song Johnny Be Good is one of the signature moments of Back to the Future. He learned how to play the exact chords of the song. As a dedication to the author, Marty does Chuck's famous duck walk. Afterwards, he imitates four other famous guitarists. He taps the guitar like Eddie Van Halen. He plays the guitar behind his head like Jimi Hendrix. He spins on the ground like Angus Young from ACDC and kicks over the amplifier like Pete Townsend. That's a hack of a performance. I can't guess you guys aren't ready for that yet. But your kids are gonna love it. And he's totally correct. We love it. Doug's crazy idea to harness the lightning works out. Marty goes back to the future, to his time in 1985. He runs to the same mall, but now we see that it's no longer Twin Pine Mall, it's Lone Pine Mall, because you remember Marty hit one of the pines with the car when he was running away from the farmer. This tells us that everything that happens in the past will somehow affect the future. And it's not the only one example. Marty is overwhelmed to see that his house is now tidy and cozy, his siblings are successful and his parents are happy together. Biff is no longer bullying his father, who actually achieved his dream and published his first science fiction novel. Behind all that hard work is Doc's advice. 
If you put your mind to it, you can accomplish anything. If you want to learn the vocabulary from the part two and three, write in the comments below and we can definitely make it happen. And I wish you a great day and we'll meet again on Thursday. Marty! You've got to come back with me! Where? Back to the future!